the greatest Jagras has presented a new way to deco farm in Monster Hunter World. But we already have several ways to farm decorations like Tempered Investigations. So how good is farming Chungus compared to the other options and what is the mathematically most effective and efficient way to farm him? Well I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And, and we're, we're the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math Guys. guys. And this is the mathematically most efficient deco farming, capturing the Chungus. In this video we'll be comparing kill farming versus puke farming, we also have some general advice on the greatest Jagras fight, and our personal pick for the most efficient way to farm decos. So we already have a video on one way to farm the greatest Jagras, puke farming. Link to that in the top right. Basically, you use the Temporal Mantle to pick up his puke decos, return from the quest once you have all 30, rinse, and repeat. This method is super easy and extremely good for farming both rare decos and Elder Melder fuel. As we mentioned in that video, it's more efficient for farming rare decos than tempered investigations are. However, Chungus also drops a buttload of decos on the quest rewards screen. So how does that compare? Well I hope y'all are ready for some math, because I've made yet another spreadsheet on this. So let's start with the core information. After about 40 rounds of testing, the quest rewards you get are anywhere between 8 to 16 possible rolls. This is basically how many boxes of items you get at the end of the quest in the reward screen. Because this is entirely RNG, how many you get, we'll just use the average of 12 as the baseline. Now before we get balls deep in math, we want to mention that none of these calculations take into account loading times. They vary too much between console, PC, consoles with SSDs, better PCs, etc. And the difference between quest times is low enough that the effect is minimal or unimportant. These are the percentage chance that each active box will roll a phase stone in the Greatest Jagras quest. These were data mined directly from the game files once again thanks to our beloved Hex Hex Hex. Link to his Twitter and Nexus mod page in the description. So, Worn Face Stones have a 33% chance to drop, Warped have a 21% chance to drop, and a Double Worn Box has a 1% chance to drop. It is also important to note that the Double Worn Box is a guaranteed drop from the quest, so one of the boxes will always be a Double Worn Face Stone. This guaranteed double worn face stone brings the actual rolls down to 11 total, so we combine that with the drop rate percentages and we get these results. So on average, you get 5.74 worn face stones and 2.31 warped face stones per run. Any individual hunt will of course sometimes have more or less face stones than this, but over the course of enough hunts while you're doing a lot of deco farming, they will average out to this. We can then multiply this by the R7 and R8 deco drop rate for these face stones. This means on average per completed quest you get 0.83 R7s and 0.23 R8s. That might not seem like a lot, but that's around 3-4 to four times what you get out of 4 box tempered investigations and Chungus puke farming. So yeah, that's a lot of decos. Now, if we add this to the 30 puke decos you can pick up during a hunt, we get a total of 1.46 total rare decos per run between the R7s and R8s. For anyone who would like to see the actual numbers behind the puke decos, check out our previous video about it. So, this 1.46 total rare decos per run is 368.33% the decos you get out of puke farming. It's 399.84% of what you get out of a 4 box tempered tier 2 investigation, and 424.51% more than a tier 3 4 box investigation. So yeah, that's a lot of decos. Of course, this is just comparing completed run versus completed run. But time is an important factor when determining the efficiency of your farming. So let's assume that other farming methods take you 3 minutes to complete. A 3 minute tier 3 may be a bit fast, but we're going to lean in the favor of other farming methods. In order for a Chungus quest completion plus 30 deco pickup run to be less efficient than a 3 minute long puke farming run, you would have to take 11.05 minutes to complete it. To be less efficient than a 3 minute long tier 2 4 box investigation, you would have to take 12 minutes, and for a tier 3 4 box you would have to take 12.74 minutes. Now, depending on your weapon choice and skill at fighting him, this may not be unrealistic as an average mean time. But this assumes you can complete tempered investigations in 3 minutes. If you can, then Chungus really shouldn't be taking you 12 minutes to beat. 
If you take six minutes on average to complete a tempered investigation, then double the Chungus runtime is 24 minutes. The point is, Chungus farming is a lot more efficient than farming tempered investigations. Realistically, beating him and picking up 30 deco drops shouldn't take you four times as long as a tempered investigation. But now for the real question. When you capture or kill Chungus, is it even worth spending the time letting him puke? After all, you waste basically your entire temporal mantle picking them up, and it can take a while. The answer to that is no. It's not worth farming the puke unless you can't capture him in under 7 minutes. So let's dive into this and explain why 7 minutes is the breakpoint for this. First off, we will refer to completing the quest as a capture run because you don't really gain anything from killing him, so capturing just makes the most sense because it shaves time. So, the average R7 plus R8 decos per capture run is 1.06. The average R7 and R8 decos per capture plus 30 puke decos runs are 1.46. Now, when you belly trip Chungus and beat on his belly, he will drop up to 10 decos on that spot. You can easily pick these up while waiting on the quest completion timer, so picking these up doesn't necessarily add any time to the run. The average rare decos for a capture run where you pick up these 10 belly decos is 1.19. If we compare the capture plus puke run to just the capture run, this is 37.27% more decos. And if we compare it to the capture plus 10 belly decos run, this is 22.1% more decos. Now, waiting for him to puke and picking up decos takes anywhere from 1 to 2 minutes, depending on your puke RNG. We'll just average that out to 90 seconds. So to calculate this, we'll basically need to find at what breakpoints does the 37 and 22% equal that extra 90 seconds of quest time. So for capture only runs, this is 4.03 minutes, and for capture plus 10 deco runs, this is 6.79 minutes. Again, there's not really a good reason to not pick up his belly decos. If you capture him in the same area that you tripped him in, you can easily pick these up while waiting to return from the quest, and even if you don't, it adds at most 15 seconds to the run. For this reason, we will use the capture plus 10 belly decos as the breakpoints, and we'll round it up to 7 minutes because honestly we're being very generous towards capture plus puke farming deco runs here. Not only does it take around 90 seconds to get him to puke and pick up the decos, you also lose your tempura mantle which you could use for otherwise actively fighting him which will likely slow down your run as well. So now you know, it's not worth puke farming during a capture run unless your average run takes more than 7 minutes. Over 7 minutes, adding puke farming into the mix becomes more efficient. Of course, this is excluding the fact that you can use the trash decos you get from the puke for elder melding, but I, we're not calculating that, that's, that's so much. That's like an 8 variable problem along with the fact that technically it's not even actually RNG because the melding tables are set in stone, so no, that, we're not doing that. We love and appreciate all of you guys, but no. Now that we know our target time, let's discuss some general advice to help farm him more efficiently. As we mentioned earlier, always capture Chungus. This saves time because you don't have to beat him down with the last bit of his health. Plus, even after he starts limping, he still has a lot of hit points left. And besides that, fighting him where he sleeps is no fun. He barely fits in there as it is, let alone four extra hunters. Next, take advantage of his belly trip. Hitting Chungus in the belly until he trips is the longest CC in the game, clocking at well over 20 seconds. However, after it's done, he loses his belly. This is the highest hit zone value on his body, so you want to spend that whole 20 seconds beating the crap out of the belly while it's still available to hit. Speaking of his belly, maximize your belly uptime. If Chungus is CC'd while he has his belly, damage to his belly cannot trigger a belly trip. This means while he is KO'd, parried, or trapped, you can beat on his belly for max deeps. And this will prolong the window where you can beat on his big, juicy belly. On top of that, Chungus paras and KOs very easily, so take advantage of this. This is a reason why you want to bring friends. The multiplayer health multiplier is only 2.25, but four sources of damage at once on his very big belly during that 20 second trip can lead to a very fast Chungus kill. This makes Chungus the only monster that has both solo and multiplayer HP that you may genuinely have more consistently fast clear times against with a group. Now as for not dying to Chungus, run Tremor Resistance 1. I do apologize, in our previous video I said run a Tremor Resistance 3 set, that was my mistake. I did not do the due diligence to check the other Tremor levels before saying that and I apologize. 
Thank you to everyone in the comments who informed me of this error. Over half of Jagras's kit while in full Chungus will tremor you. Even if you have a shield, it's possible to block the attack and get tremored from a different angle. Considering his one-shot ability, packing tremor resist one should be considered mandatory. Speaking of one-shots, run health boost. For melee, health boost one should be more than enough, but for ranged, bring two to three if you want to avoid one-shots. You may want to consider bringing evade extender on bow specifically. Finally, we want to share our fastest method for farming Chungus. This method takes about two minutes on average once you have it down. This method uses, surprise surprise, the Monster Blender, the R7 Glutton. This method is basically a modified version of Tatsufi's that he used to get the world record run on Chungus. Tatsufi is a phenomenal speedrunner, so link to his video and his channel in the description. And a big thank you to Delbuster over on our Discord server for informing me about the Tatsufi run. Unlike Tatsufi, we are not going to use an affinity booster here. We are using your stock standard glutton build. We don't even need tremor resistance 1 because if we execute this well, he'll never get to tremor us. Now, this is a video about deco farming, so if you don't happen to have 6 attack decos lying around, use this build instead. It is a bit less efficient compared to the 6 attack deco build, but it'll still work just fine for farming Chungus. Which will let you farm more attack decos, which will let you have a better build, which will let you farm monsters more efficiently so you can have more attack decos, so you can have a better build, so you can have more attack decos, so you can have better builds, so you can have more attack decos. Now if you really want to min-max your efficiency here, eat as well as restock your ammo after you go into hunt. You still have to wait a while for Great Jagras to eat any Aptonos to become Chungus, so you might as well do that while you're waiting. Once you get over here to where he's gonna come out of, pick up a stone and shoot it in his face as soon as you can see him and run away. This will save you about 5 seconds of him looking around. Go ahead and buff up because this run will not take longer than 2 minutes, throw on your impact mantle and wait for him to attack an Aptonoth. As soon as he does, place a pitfall trap directly behind the Aptonoth so he'll fall into it as soon as he's done and then just start shooting him in the belly. Avoid hitting his head as much as possible because you don't want to accidentally KO him while he's in the pitfall trap. Doing this will actually shorten the amount of CC time you get and may make it so that the strat doesn't work as cleanly. Try to position yourself forward and to his left so that you don't accidentally hit the head as often as well as so as soon as he gets out you have a good angle to shoot him in the head and KO him. Make sure you shoot him in the head not the belly because if you do belly trip him here it'll make the run a little bit more sloppy. Once he gets up he's gonna try to roll but keep shooting his belly and you will belly trip him. Now you want to keep shooting his belly as much as you can while trying to position yourself a bit more towards the side of his head. This will make it easier for you to shoot his head when his belly is gone. And make sure you have a shock trap ready. The moment that you see that his belly is going away and he's about to stand up, sheath and put a shock trap down. Switch to Trank Ammo, shoot him twice with it, and if you need to, shoot him in the head a bit more just in case you haven't dealt quite enough damage yet. And that's it, that's all you have to do to do a consistent 2 minute long Chungus hunt. Make sure you sheath and run over and pick up those decos as fast as you can, although as you can see I was a little slow on doing it in here and still got all 10 decos. We would recommend bringing materials for an extra trap and making sure you have it hotkeyed as well as some flash pods. Just in case you KO him a little bit too early, you'll need a second trap to cap him very quickly. And that about does it guys. As always, thank you for watching the video. Let us know about your favorite Chungus moment in the comments. If you're looking for somebody to hunt the Chung with, check out our Discord, the Mathalos Nest. You can follow us on Twitter to find updates for videos and other things that interest us. You can also check me out on Twitch, where I stream Monster Hunter and other games almost every day. Shout out to Honey for providing the tools we use to make sets, and a big thank you to our patrons, Broken Leah, Captain Redbeard, Darkness, Ken, Lightweight, Robin, Skylar, Severand, Flashing Turtle, and Ven. Thank you very much for keeping the channel alive. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified for future videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Happy hunting, hunters! Bye! Bye.